So you want a fresher and you want a job in cloud and DevOps, but there are so many things out there to learn. Which exact topics should you learn and master? So I spoke to a few of the freshers who got a cloud job straight out of their college. And I compiled a step-by-step -step list for you to study. And I'm going to share that with you guys and girls in this video. Let's get started. So a lot of the things depend on the actual degree you are getting in your college. For example, if you are going for a computer science degree where they're teaching you programming languages, data structures, algorithm, then you will go into cloud developer path. Your interviews will be mostly on coding questions and data structures. Now, the majority of the folks are not in that bucket. You are probably going to college for non-computer science degree and you want to get in cloud and DevOps. So here are the five things that you need to learn. Assuming you are a fresher and you can study every day, it will take you somewhere in between three to six months to learn all this stuff. The first thing you should learn is nothing to do with cloud or DevOps itself, but used in every cloud DevOps or any other IT project, databases. There are way more jobs for backend than there are for frontend. And database is a critical part of any backend. You should absolutely learn SQL or structured query language. It is fun and easy to learn. Learn these three following topics. One, what are tables, primary keys, indexes, and ER diagrams. Number two, how to do queries to the table, how to do subqueries and joins. Three, DDL or data definition language to create, delete, modify tables. I personally learned this after I graduated from the college because I went to college for electronics and communications and they did not teach me databases with my degree but in every interview I went to, they asked me questions on databases. You do not need to know any NoSQL databases, but if you can study the high level difference between SQL and NoSQL databases, that would be good. Next, you need to learn the cloud itself. So it is impossible to master any cloud in six months, but the good news is uh, the interviewer will ask you questions in these four main areas. One, general cloud knowledge, uh, two, compute, three, storage, four, networking. So under general cloud knowledge, you will get questions like, uh, what is cloud? Is cloud secure? What are the advantages of going to cloud? What is hybrid cloud, etc. So for this part, I would recommend you to get the cloud practitioner certification. This certification is easy and fun. The study material is available for free from AWS. I'll give the link in the description. Now for the other three parts, compute, storage, and networking, uh, they, this will cover areas like compute service such as EC2, Lambda, EKS, uh, storage, a lot of the questions will be on the databases. So at this point, assuming you are going step by step, you already know databases. So all you need to learn is advantages of running a database on the cloud. And the networking is, how your application can connect to the data center, what is a load balancer, what is the difference between application load balancer and network load balancer, etc. For this compute, storage, and network part, I would recommend you to do Solutions Architect Associate certifications. Uh, so this will actually focus on these three areas. And at the end of the certification, you should be able to answer the interview questions. Now the next thing you need to learn is the DevOps. So for this part, there are multiple areas as well. So under this, you need to learn Git. Learn Git basics, branching, merging, pull request, comparing changes should be sufficient for your interview. Git is easy to learn. Search YouTube videos and practice using your machine and GitHub for free. Next thing under DevOps that you need to know is infrastructure as code. Infrastructure as code allows you to code your infrastructure so that you can provision or replicate your cloud components faster and without any manual human errors. So this is at the core of any DevOps job. So whichever DevOps job you take, you will be writing infrastructure as code. So learn AWS CloudFormation or Terraform 
you can try a bit of both for very basics and decide which one you like. I personally started with AWS CloudFormation because it's easier to learn, easier to run and test, and the whole thing is AWS managed. Uh, CloudFormation does not have frequent version updates like Terraform uh, that breaks some stuff. I learned Terraform after I got my job. Next is the actual DevOps tool. So this is probably the hardest part for the freshers. Good news is you just need to know the basics. If you know Git and infrastructure as code, any good company will give you the job with basic knowledge of one of the DevOps tool. For this, I recommend learning Jenkins. Learn how to create Jenkins job, Jenkins file, how to submit CloudFormation with Jenkins, and Jenkins job for provisioning EC2s. So the next thing you should learn is a stretch goal. So I spoke to a few of the spread freshers and they said learning this helped them a lot. So even if you just learn the basics of this topic, it will drastically increase the chances of you getting the job. So I'm talking about Kubernetes. So I covered in my highest paid cloud DevOps video how Kubernetes is going to be huge in the coming years. So even if you know the basic concepts, you should be golden. Check out my highest rated Kubernetes course in Udemy for this if interested. It has basic and advanced chapters divided. If you are a fresher, you can just do the basics part. My course also covers DevOps concepts, so you can also learn that part from this course. The most important part of a fresher's interview is communication. I failed my first IT interview because of my poor communication skill. Learning all the technical stuff is not enough. For a lot of you, English is probably not your first language, so you need to practice more. A lot of the times, you will think an interview went great, but you did not get the job. So chances are someone with a better communication skill got that job. Because remember, in real world projects, you will work in a team. So technical stuff is all good and important, but you have to communicate effectively with other team members, your managers and other teams to effectively do the job. Also as a fresher, in your interview, you will get non-technical questions like, where do you see yourself 10 years down the line? So honestly, I wanted to answer that I want a big house, a really good computer to play video games, and I want my kid to eat vegetables. But of course, you cannot say that. So you have to say like, you want to become a team lead, start your own business or some other BS. The fact is, interviewer does not care what your answer is. All the interviewer is looking for is how you express and articulate your train of thoughts. So practice, practice and practice. Last thing I would say is, it is okay to fail your first interview. I failed my first interview and things turned out okay for me. Some people, like me, just need a little bit of the practice. There is no shame of that. Don't think your worth as a person is less because you failed an interview. I think most of the disappointment and sadness comes from when other people ask you, hey, how did your interview go? And you had to say that it didn't go well or you didn't get the job. So after I failed my interview the first time, next time when I was going for interview, I did not tell anyone in case I fail again. Also, the cloud DevOps job market is exploding. This is just the beginning. Even if you fail and you keep trying, trust me, you will get a cloud DevOps job. Let me know what did you think of this video? Are you a fresher yourself thinking about joining cloud DevOps? Did you fail your first interview? You have any questions that you want me to address? Put them all in the comment section. And please do all the YouTube stuff. I know it is annoying when I say, uh, click like, subscribe and comment, but it really helps the channel grow. Uh, also follow me on LinkedIn and Instagram. On Instagram, I put a lot of the behind the scenes video, uh, how I am in my personal life, uh, my travels, etc. Check it out. Uh, all right, guys and girls, hopefully this video was helpful. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.